Have you ever watched a debate between a Christian and a Hebrew Israelite? And once the Hebrew Israelite says something, the chat goes crazy as if the Christian has been destroyed and has no hope. And it's made you question whether Hebrew Israelites are teaching the truth and Christians are just manipulating the Bible as we're accused of. If you felt like that before, I want to show you why you shouldn't react like that just based on comments from the crowd or the confidence of the communicator. Because I was recently watching this debate about what is salvation and who is it for? was between a Christian pastor and a captain in one of the Hebrew Israelite camps called ISUPK. That stands for Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, if you're wondering. So let's get into it. The pastor brings up a clear passage which totally destroys the Hebrew Israelite teaching that salvation is only for Israel. Let's listen. Let's read on. In 2 Chronicles chapter number 6, check it out. Moreover, concerning a foreigner, watch this who is not of your people Israel. Since I know a lot of you they try to make the strangers Israel, the foreigners Israel, and everybody else Israel. No, concerning a foreigner who is not of your people Israel, but has come from a far country for the sake of your great name in your mighty hand and your outstretched arm, when they come, ooh, check this out, when they come and pray, where? in this temple. Now, if you know anything about the temple, you know the temple was the place where the Ark of the Covenant was, where the habitation of God and the Shekinah glory would fill the place. Jesus said that my father's house shall be the house of prayer. It is the house of all nations. And guess what? When these foreigners come in this temple, right? Then hear heaven, uh, from heaven in your dwelling place, it says, do according to all for which the foreigner calls you to do, that all peoples of the earth may know your name and fear you as do your people Israel. Notice even in the Old Testament, there was an equality there that God wanted to bring the nations in to know him the same way Israel knows him. The passage is clear. These are not Israelites in a Gentile state of mind, as Hebrew Israelites like to say, because they're Israelites already. And secondly, Solomon is praying in that passage that when they come and pray because of God's majesty, not because they just realized they were Israelites. This is why Solomon is saying, strangers not of Israel in verse 32 in 2 Chronicles chapter 6. Solomon understood God's plan was to have Israelites and non-Israelites from all over the world who would serve him. But let's look at one more quick example before we hear what the captain has to say to address this. This. Watch this. Joshua chapter number eight, verse 34. And afterward, he read all the words of the law, the blessings and the cursings, according to all that is written in the book of the law. Verse 35. There was not a word of all that Moses had commanded, with which Joshua did not read before the assembly of Israel with the women the little ones and the strangers who were living among them. These two passages are just a taster of scripture, which cut through the false doctrine. But before I show you the captain's response, what do you think people were saying in the live chat while the pastor was quoting these verses? And it Shalom. Kolom la Yahweh. Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. Ba'ashem Kankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of his son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing his gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Ye were strangers to the commonwealth. <clears throat> so I want to go into this tonight. And I want to talk about a couple of examples on where the Israelites were being called strangers or heathen. <clears throat> so I want to go here first. Let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter 2. Book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. For we are his workmanship created in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye, being in time past, 
Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. So in times past were called Gentiles. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me go ahead and look this up. Gentiles come from ethnos. Gentiles. Heathen. See? Heathen. Or nations. Heathen. So if we take that. Let's go here. Let's go to the book of Matthew 11. Let's go to Matthew 18, <clears throat> verse 16. The book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So what are we reading about? We're reading about good works, staying under the covenant, staying within the word, under the covenant. See, let's go back to that. Ephesians 2, verse 10, For we are his workmanship, created in Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, unto good works, which God hath before ordained, that we should walk in them. Wherefore, remember that ye, being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision, in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Hamashiach, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world, without <clears throat> outside of the covenant, without Hamashiach Yahawashai, without good works. Let's go back. <clears throat> Excuse me. Matthew 18 and 16. But if he will not hear thee, then take with thee one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a publican, liken or compare to. So then that brother is not a brother, but is not a people or outside of the covenant. Let him be as the heathen. So he's following the ways of the other nations. Heathen. We went into that definition. Ethnos, heathen. Let's go here, Matthew 6 and 7. And this is Yahweh Shai speaking. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they should be heard for their much speaking. So Israelites can be called heathen or reprobate or apostate outside of the covenant, operating outside of the word. <clears throat> Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. <clears throat> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32. Let's go to verse 17. Let's go to 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. As the heathen, worshiping idols... Verse 17, they sacrifice unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, 
to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. Of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. So we became castaways. Because we rejected him, he rejected us. That's in Hosea 4 and 6. My people are destroyed without knowledge. And because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee and thy children. And then when we read Hosea 1, in that place where it was Hosea 1 and 10, in that place where it was said unto thee, ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto thee, ye are the sons of the living God. Many examples of the rock that begot thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten God that formed thee. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. So the Israelites were sacrificing their children unto idols as the heathen. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation, children in whom is no faith. So the Israelites elect are worshiping the Most High, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in spirit and in truth. Everybody outside of that is as the heathen, which starts with the two-thirds of the house of Israel. Deuteronomy 32 and 21. They moved, they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. So operating outside of the covenant is a no people, or as the heathen, or the heathen. So we're going to see this prophecy in Acts 13 and 44. And it can also apply today. Operating or serving our enemies. Which starts with Esau, Edom. Which starts with Amalek. Well, let's go here. See, we're going to see this prophecy. <clears throat> Paul. Paul turns to the Gentiles. Israelites that had fallen away from the covenant, became strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. Acts 13 and 44. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and spake against those things which were spoken by Paul contradicting and blaspheming provoke you to jealousy with those that are not a people. So these Israelite foreigners were coming back to the word of promise and were being called to repentance. And Paul's mission was to garner the Israelite foreigners that were cut off from their heritage. Verse 46, then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. So prophecy says that Judah shall be raised up first so that's the order <clears throat> judah the southern kingdom which starts with judah which were called jews but also benjamin and levi were called jews as well but that term judah comes that term jew comes from judah 
Let's go here real quick. One moment. Um, maybe it's not intended for me to go there. See, we would be as the heathen, and I would provoke them to jealousy with those that are not a people, which we read right here in Deuteronomy 32 and 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. And that happened back then during Paul's time, and it can also apply today. We're being provoked to anger and envy under a foolish nation. But these were Israelite foreigners that were cut off from their heritage, castaways, dressing like the heathen, and many of them were speaking the Greek language and calling themselves Greek or Grecians. So we were not a people in the eyes of the Most High outside of the covenant, which was prophesied in the Old Testament. Let's go to Ezekiel 20 and 31. The book of Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 31. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols. Even unto this day, that's heavy. Even unto this day. So I was in the spirit speaking about how Deuteronomy 32 and 21 can apply today as well. Exodus 20 and 31. For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, Ye pollute yourselves with all your idols, even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all. That ye say, we will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. So the Israelites were being called Gentiles, heathen. <clears throat> I mean, it's clear. This is no secret. And only the elect can understand this right now. <clears throat> and many of the Israelites today are still operating as a heathen. And they're rejecting the word of truth, the word of covenant, and stuck in the ways of Babylon, this universal one-size-fits-all doctrine, this new world order religion under the Luciferians, just like Antiochus tried to bring together different multitudes of peoples and nations and tongues, customs and rituals and worships, a conglomeration of organized chaos, just merging Babylonian god worships with Egyptian god worships, ancient Greek god worships, and Roman goddesses and gods. I mean, this place is a cesspool for confusion. So the scriptures spell it out. And then we'll get one more <clears throat> because it, <coughs> excuse me, it proves it further in Romans 11. Let's go to around 25, somewhere in there. See? So this is talking about the natural branches and the wild olive tree or the wild olive branches that are being brought back together. I'm not going to make this long. I'm just going to start right here. 
uh, Romans 11 and 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. So these are Israelites that were castaways, that fell off, that fell away. But the prophecies say that Judah shall be raised up first. That was the scripture that I was going to. So the order is the southern kingdom first, raising up Judah, the head tribe, followed by the other tribes. <clears throat> but these Israelite foreigners are being grafted in again. But not that they should boast themselves against the order of the natural branches. And that order starts with Judah. And they also if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if thou were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were graft contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Their own olive tree is the entire nation of Israel, northern and southern kingdom coming back together. <clears throat> For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So these Israelite foreigners are being brought back into the commonwealth of the nation of Israel as a sovereign nation, one nation, instead of being divided. And so all Israel shall be saved. It's right there that these Gentiles are Israelites. These men want to just blot out scriptures to try to make up their own man-made philosophy and ignore the volume of the book. It's right there. We just read it. And the other big body shot is that he's able to graft them in again that we read. In verse 23, Let's close, read it again and close out. <clears throat> Where is it at? All Israel shall be saved. Right here. One moment. Yeah. Romans 11 and 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. All Israel shall be saved. And so the elect is coming back to this wise counsel through repentance, being washed by the word. When we read John chapter 15, the first few verses, now are you clean by the word which I have spoken unto you. So this is how the olive tree is being put back together, northern and southern kingdom. Let's get one more. Jeremiah 11, somewhere around verse 15. Jeremiah 11. See, let's go to verse 15. What have my beloved to do in mine house, 
seeing she have wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee. When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. So doing evil cuts us off from the Most High's good grace and mercy. We get cut off or cast away because he is too holy to behold wickedness. This is why we needed a savior or mediator, intercessor, Yahweh Shai. Let's close out here. Jeremiah 11, verse 16. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit, with the noise of a great tumult. He hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. This is how we fell away. We fell off by doing iniquity, idolatry. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee have pronounced evil against thee. For the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger and offering incense unto Baal. We read that in Deuteronomy 32. Only talking about the Israelites that were looked upon as the heathen, cast it away as the heathen. Deuteronomy 32 and 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. <laughs> so as it is this day, we're under fools. Not only are the two-third Israelites rebellious, rebellious, but they're following after the wicked. That is against the Most High. The Bible says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. And this is where we are today. Just like these two-third pastors, these leaders that cause us to go off or error, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, is going to visit you for your iniquities, your transgressions. Hopefully, this lesson has been edifying. Our praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yeshuala. And the Baal. We got next, Lord willing. Barakatam. Shalom.